Hello again, everybody. My name is John DeHealy. People know me. I produced this book for Stoney McGurn, my friend. He was born in 1941. It's his life story. It's up until recently. It's on audio as well. You can get it on Amazon. And it's a very important, good book and a good read. And we're getting to another good book and a good read shortly too. Sponsors, Liffey Van Lines, moving company here in New York City. They've been around for over 50 years. That's a lot of experience. When it comes to moving, let Liffey do the lifting. I do have a guest back on again today. Mick Melanchi was on before. He's an actor here in New York City. And he was acting down in the Irish Rep, among other places, and doing other things. Today, we're going to be talking about James Joyce and Ulysses. And the book Ulysses has been more talked about than read. So I'll give you a bit of a backdrop to it before Mick starts explaining about parties and events, which is important coming up. Um... James Joyce himself was one of ten. He died only at the age of 58. His father was a functional alcoholic and a professional singer. And Ulysses, it took him a long number of years to write the book. It's like about a day in Dublin. And the first part of, of the book, the open part of the book, is about reminiscing on the first time he had sex. I can't even remember the last time he had sex. But uh, James Joyce uh, explains that. He speaks in many different languages to make the book even more complicated if you thought it was easy to read. And he brings in aspects of the Vikings, the Normans, and other stuff. And before Mick comes on, I will give one interesting insight to the people of religion out there. And it's a pity some lawyers didn't know this a few weeks back. He gives, uh, he borrows something from the Garden of Eden. And he explains that poor Adam was just a simple gardener raking leaves in the Garden of Eden. So you have poor Adam there on a hot sweaty day, and he's raking the leaves, and a beautiful girl comes along, and she says to Adam, "Could you grab, could you grab a few apples there from the tree?" And that's what poor Adam was doing, and we're all suffering ever since. Mick, you're welcome back. Okay, Mick thanks Palantir. very much. Thanks for having me back, mate. I really appreciate it, buddy. Uh, I love all the work you're doing with this podcast, man. It's great. So thank you for thank having you. me back. Keep up the good work. Well, I know you set many tongues a wagon. Right. So, indeed, indeed, indeed. Um, so, your interpretation of Ulysses, and we'll get to Finnegan's Wake, too, actually. Well, we will get to Finnegan's Wake eventually. Maybe not the book, but certainly the place. Yep. Uh, a little pub there on 73rd Street. That's right. Uh, my, my relationship to Bloomsday began back in the 90s in Ireland when uh, they first started celebrating this great novel. It's become quite a cultural sensation all over the world now. We've been doing this with Origin Theatre Company and Bloom's Tavern down there at 58th Street between 2nd and 3rd Avenue. We've been holding a Bloomsday brunch, a Bloomsday breakfast, a Bloomsday celebration for the past 10 years with them. This is actually going to be our 10th year in a row uh, celebrating the great day on 58th Street with Noel and all the staff there at Bloom's Tavern. Um, and it's evolved over the years uh, as a celebration. In the last couple of years, we've renamed it a Bloomsday Revel, so you can get you can enjoy all the revelries that go on, and it's it's just a wonderful occasion. People dress up in uh, the costumes of the time, and um, we hold an annual competition for the best dressed Molly and Leopold Bloom. And this year, it's going to be especially fun. We're going to have plenty of raffles, raffle prizes where you can win tickets to some of the hottest uh, shows at the Irish Rep at the Irish Arts Centre. We've got some wonderful gifts to raffle away to people. We have live music with Alan Gogarty, our good friend, who's been there for the last couple of years. Very we good. also have a wonderful Joyce and inspired pub quiz coming up, as well as a couple of readings from the famed text of Ulysses right. by some of the ladies of the novel. Of course. It's hard to make sure the ladies are heard. You know, That's, a, that's an interesting one. I'm glad you brought that up because I was about to come to it directly or indirectly, because back in the day of James Joyce and indeed all the poets and my resident historian, Brian Layden from Sligo, explained on here that back in the day that the poets, they were looked up to like superstars, like they were superstars, but they had no money. They didn't make any money. Yeah. And, in, and then indeed, I guess you could say that for an artist too, but then indeed women were falling in love with them for a while until they realized, like Patrick Kavna, his girlfriend, she dumped him on Raglan Road when she realized he had nothing in the pants. I mean, no wallet. But at least he wrote Raglan Road, he gave it to Luke Kelly, 
that was his way of here. I have no money, but I'm here. So continue on a little bit more about the events, music you said, and raffle and all that. Plenty of live music. Um, it is a literary event, of course. Mm -hmm. So we will be reading a few excerpts from the text. Traditionally, it's taken place on the second floor up at Bloom's Tavern, but I'm expecting quite a crowd this year. So it looks like it might actually take over the entire premises. Very good. Maybe spill out onto the sidewalk. Noel has done a great job down there at Blooms of getting plenty of press in and down through the years. Oh, yeah. That's, that's what we're hoping for this year, you know. Um, and there's a great statue of James Joyce outside the front door. There is. There's a wonderful statue of James Joyce outside the front door there. And if you sit down with Noel and ask him all about how he got that statue, I'm telling you, it will take you as long. It'll, the story of the traveling of that statue from, I think, it was China. It'll take you long years. It would take about the same amount of time to read from the very first page to the last page of Ulysses to get to Interesting it. enough about James Joyce, it took him, it took him seven years to, to write Ulysses yeah. over different countries. I think he went to Paris and wherever and all that. Did complicated read. That's why people talk more about it than reading it. Absolutely. I mean, it, like I had Peg, say, Peg from Basket Islands, Island and search. And she wasn't easy either because it was all Australia. Tough one, too. Yeah. Well, I don't know who I would take or um, Ulysses. But I know one thing. If I was hanging out for a few drinks, I'd rather be drinking with uh, James Shook, who sounds like a bit of fun, than Patrick Cavan. Cavan was a bit of a miserable guy. He'd show up for free drinks. And indeed, he showed up at the uh, James Joyce celebrations. So... More to you, Mick. Tell us things more happen. Well, well, well one, one interesting thing I'd like to say about uh, Ulysses is that it's often been said that if Dublin was to be burnt to the ground tomorrow, you could probably rebuild the entire city brick by brick just by reading the pages of uh, Ulysses. So uh, he really did. He, he, did uh, he sent poor old Leopold Bloom on quite yes. an odyssey on that day that he walked around Dublin. But, yes. um, yeah, this is just one of the other events that we have here at Origin Theatre Company. We're <clears> actually <throat> just coming to the end of our Plays in May event that we've been having all through the month of May for the last couple of weeks with our good friends at the Irish Repertory Theatre down there on 22nd Street, Art Centre over on the west side there on 11th right. Avenue. We've had some really wonderful uh, new contemporary play readings going on there by some absolutely fantastic playwrights such as um, Deirdre Kinahan who has a show coming up at the Irish Rep in July. Um, Rex Ryan, who uh, runs the Glass Mass Theatre in Dublin, he was part of this uh, of this current um, event. And Michael Egan, wonderful Irish-American playwright, mm -hmm. wrote an absolutely fantastic play called Five Minutes <clears throat> based on the screenplay by Guy Hibbert. That was at the Irish Rep a few weeks ago. Our final event is actually this Monday night on the 22nd of May. Um, I'm not sure if this edition of your podcast will be on time but it's going to feature a play by Cork sisters Shannon Holly and Megan Holly that takes place down at the Irish Repertory Theatre at 7 p.m. this coming Monday um, proving to be a platform for uh, young playwrights to get their work seen here in New York City. Excellent, so, excellent, good stuff Mick. The next I generation of James Joyce Fantastic I did have a friend on here a couple of weeks back, Penny McCartney He's great. He's a great man, very interesting. And after I finished with him, he was scouting around to meet um, some of the higher ed ones. He was going to the Irish Art Centre, hanging out with the Cardinal and different people, and meeting out and about. Uh, Paddy loves to be out and about, which is good. So, we'll have a bit of a shout out to him as well, which was written by James Joyce. For those of listeners, that are not true to Finnegan's Wake story. It was also written by It took him years to write it as well. But basically, Finnegan falls off a, a ladder and he's in the coffin. And somebody throws a glass of whiskey at him and he comes back to life and he wants more whiskey. And I can tell you here to now, to date, that happens a lot of Finnegan's Wake today. Someone can fall asleep and to get another drink, they're really alive. You'll wake up with a wet hair and a round eruption will soon begin. There you go. That, that does happen too. Indeed, indeed, indeed. The other bit about Finnegan's Wake and indeed Ulysses is there's great stories of Dublin, no doubt. And I like some of them. I like the, I like the two women washing clothes in the River Liffey 
for the youth to do the washing. That was the what was not. But not only the washing, you know, just like with the hairdresser, the laundry, gossip. The gossip is amazing. And they're talking about all the gossip of the day around Kavanaugh was drunk, or well, Bridget did that easy one, he would be drunk more times than not. But still, talented, given that. And indeed, Oscar Wilde influenced James Joyce, and they influenced each other, which is amazing and remarkable way to do. And I, I was, something else caught my eye there lately was people that uh, uh, criticize Ulysses. Like, forget about the critics, form your own opinion, enjoy what you read, enjoy what you see. It's like going to a play, you can enjoy it. Don't have a critic tell you it's good, bad, or indifferent. That's only their opinion, and their opinion shouldn't matter. It's your opinion should matter. Absolutely. Come, check it out, see what you think yourself. Don't leave it in the hands of the critics, because like you said, John, true word was never said. That's just one person's opinion, you know? That's all. That's, That's all. That's so all getting back to uh, Noel Muldoon in Bloom's Tavern, it's on in June the 16th, am I right? Uh, no, Noel O'Donovan, I think. Noel Sorry. O'Donovan. That's okay. right. It's oh, well, Bloom's Day is celebrated annually on June 16th, but our event is June 11th. We're kicking right. off Bloom's Day week on the Sunday before. Okay. Efficient. This has always proved to be a great one for us because. Right. Well, I'm, glad you, I'm glad you corrected me on both scores there. Uh, yeah, June, June 11. June 11. And if you go to Origin Theatre uh, org forward slash Bloomsday, right. there's, there's a link right there where you can RSVP to the event. Okay. That's so a, it's a, free, a free event. As always, we do an awful lot of work here in the city. A lot of our events are free. So we do ask if people can afford it. To make a suggested donation of ten dollars, of course there'll be plenty of raffle tickets on sale on the day as well. And all that sounds, like a, sounds like a fun, yeah. It's a fun weekend. Fun. It's a bit of crack, you know. And it's uh, there's usually a couple of sore heads on Monday morning. So well, I, I can. I, I I was in the Bronx the other day for me as well, yeah. and I love the Bronx. It's, if you can Google that one, I love the Bronx, and they have they have events going on for a week. Oh, typical, of, typical of the Bronx, they said a week in the Bronx is actually 30 days, not seven days. So I'm sure Bloom's you can after Bloom's Day, you'll be more than welcome to win. And like the two women in Dublin, have a good old gossip. You know, enjoy the gossip of who sang, who won, who won the prize. Who's, who's heading home to Ireland on Ireland? Yes, hopefully. Hopefully, and, uh, yeah. We'll see. We'll see how it all works out. But no, it's coming together. It's been a great event for years and years, and we're really looking forward to this. Well, I'm, I'm delighted to be involved this, because all this is one because it is Bloom's Tavern's tenth anniversary. Also, right. So that's, Fantastic. That's the to it, you know? Fantastic. I I really I really enjoyed that part. And I have to say it's one of my favorite. You know, and then what I. They do well, a great thing to get us there. You're absolutely you're oh, right. yeah. When I was when I was talking about Guinness on the I Love the Bronx, I met the uh, CEO of that, and I didn't realize that my mother had a connection with Anheuser Bush. Oh, Tom well. Doherty, yeah, Tom Doherty was her second cousin, and he was the top guy for Anheuser Bush here in North America. So my mother didn't tell me everything. I thought she was devoted to Guinness. I didn't realize that she was fond of Budweiser as well. But uh, good for her, she. In fairness, Budweiser, Budweiser is brewed by Guinness in Ireland. So there is a little bit of a, you know, they yeah. are kind of putting hands over there. <laughs> well, the choice of champions, no doubt. There you go. Yeah. So make sure we leave everything in or we have everything out? Everything in, brother. Everything's in. Yeah. So the event is the 11th of June. The 11th Mark, of June. From Mark June. Mark June. Mark June. 11th of June. 11th of June, 3 o'clock. There's raffle prizes, live music, plenty of crack, some um, complimentary food, some wonderful Good. cocktails sponsored by Jameson's Irish Whiskey. And, uh, and I also want to just give a big thank you to the, uh, to the Irish Consulate here in New York, our, um, to the wonderful uh, um, Consul General Helena Nolan and all her team. They've always been wonderful sponsors. They are good, yeah. Yeah, they are good. Yeah. It's fantastic that we have them on our side also. And I tell you one thing, if Patrick Kavanagh 
was alive, and if you knew there was food there, they'd probably show up, yeah. No doubt. <laughs> I think Patrick Kavanagh came into Ryan's daughter a couple of times back. I, 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 know, I know people like him, actually, yeah. Yeah, definitely, I know people like that. So I, I guess we'll sign off, Mick, and it's always good to look. My guest is going to be active here in New York City. If you enjoyed the podcast, subscribe, that's important for me. The likes are important for me. And I'll be back next week with another Irish-American guy in a book about dad, a copper and a dust-up, I mean, a police and a dust-up. I, I forgot to mention as well about James Joyce. He, he got into some little things as well with the book because of the language, and bad language, a lot of sex and... That's true. And indeed, it's not wrong with it, but um, from my point of view, depending on how many drinks I had, he got an Irish American lawyer called John Quinn to defend him here in the book published. I mean, he had just getting the book published. No. I mean, behind me here is Tony. And Tony's book is some to Ulysses, you know. They're like, there's a little bit of but nothing too bad. You know, you wouldn't have got confessions immediately. Stoney didn't have the Catholic Church breathing down his neck to ban him. <laughs> That's true. And it was a different different time. Yeah, different indeed. Time. Different times. That's true. Mick, I want to say song. Song lads. And song lads. Exchange scale. Scale why her thoughts. <laughs>